Hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle Emerson and I love helping teachers with all things technology, organization, and productivity. Google Calendar is a free digital calendar that is perfect for scheduling your time and creating reminders. I actually have a step-by-step -step tutorial video that is perfect for getting started with Google Calendar, which I will link for you down in the description box. But today I am sharing 10 Google Calendar hacks for teachers that will save you time and make your life easier. number one is to use keyboard shortcuts. These can be a huge time saver once you get familiar with them. The first thing you need to do is make sure your keyboard shortcuts are enabled. So click the gear icon up at the top, choose settings, come down to keyboard shortcuts, and make sure that this button is checked. Once you have that checked, if you return to your main calendar, you can actually view all the keyboard shortcuts available by clicking shift and then question mark on your keyboard. It will open up this view and it has a list of all the keyboard shortcuts. Obviously, you're probably not gonna use all of them and it may be difficult to memorize them, but this is an easy way to reference them when needed. Personally, my favorite keyboard shortcuts are the ones that allow me to jump between different calendar views. So if I quickly want to open up just a day view, I can click D on my keyboard and it will switch to the day view. W will take me to the week. M will take me to the month. Y will take me to the year. X will take me to a four day view and A will take me to a schedule view. Now at any time, if you need a quick refresher of those, just click the view button up at the top and it does list the keyboard shortcuts next to each one. I'm gonna return to month. Or if you open up your keyboard shortcuts, you'll notice you can also use numbers. So whatever works best for you. For me, it's easy to remember that M equals month and W equals week and D equals day. So those are the ones that I prefer. Now here's a mini hack within that hack. You can actually view just a certain number of days at a time or a certain number of weeks using the mini calendar on the side. So if you click and drag, you can select just the days you want to view, or you can click and drag the weeks that you want to view up to a maximum of four weeks at a time. Hack number two is to create shared calendars. This will allow multiple people to view, edit, and manage your events. So this is perfect for teachers who may be working with other teachers in their building or team teachers or even a school. So in order to share a calendar, you're going to locate the calendar you want to share. So let's say I want to share this workout calendar. Click the three buttons and then choose settings and sharing. Over on the side, you want to choose share with specific people and you're going to click add people. Here you can type in the name or email address. So let's say I'm sharing it with my joint email that I have with my husband, and then I can add in other ones if needed, and I can choose the permissions. So maybe I want him to be able to make changes and manage sharing, then I can click send. Now, if for some reason I choose the wrong setting or I need to change the setting, I can always click the drop down here and select a different option or remove that person by clicking the X. You can also make your calendar public and share the link. So if you scroll up just a little bit to access permission for events, you can make your calendar available to the public, whether it's only seeing free or busy or seeing all event details. And if you click get shareable link, this is a link that you could share with others and they would have access to your calendar. If you are part of an organization such as a district, you would also have the availability to share only with those within your organization. So here are a few ideas of ways that you could use this as a teacher. First of all, your school could have a calendar with all the events going on. Maybe the secretaries and the administrators will have edit access to actually add events to the calendar and the rest of the staff will just have view access so they can see the calendar events, but they're not able to go in and manipulate them. You also could create a grade level calendar. So this is an easy way for all of the team teachers on a specific grade level to be on the same page in terms of grade level events, you could allow all of those teachers to have edit access and that way you could all manage the calendar together. We will be co-managers together. 
Similarly, you could create a class calendar to share with parents and families that would have events coming up, maybe assignments or when things are gonna be due, and parents would be able to have access to the calendar at any time and know what's going on. Now, if you're sharing this calendar with families, you probably wouldn't want it to be public, but you could embed it on a class website that maybe you've created through Google Sites. I do have a video where I share how to create a class website through Google Sites, which I will link for you down below. You also could create a lesson calendar for yourself so you can keep track of what lessons you're teaching on what days. And if you work with any special educators or co-teachers, you could invite them to your calendar. That way you're all on the same page and you can easily see what lessons you're teaching when. And again, a little mini hack within this hack, if you are creating a lesson calendar, you can actually add attachments to the events. So you could add in slides or worksheets or anything else you plan on using for that lesson and that way the other co-teacher or special educator would be able to see the exact materials you're going to use in order to add attachments select the event and then choose the little edit button it's the pencil then come down to the attachment button it looks like a paper clip and this will allow you to search your drive or files you have on your computer in order to add attachments to that event Hack number three is to color code your calendars. This allows you to very easily differentiate between different areas of your life. So maybe all of your work events are one color and all of your personal events are a different color. So first you can set the default color for each calendar you have. If you select the calendar, choose the little three buttons, and then you can choose between these colors here or even add a custom color by using the little selector tool or typing in the hex code. But you also can change the color for specific events within a calendar. I'm gonna go ahead and create just an example event. Let's say um, I do cardio and I do this on Fridays from 5 p.m to 6 p.m. And let's say this repeats weekly on Friday. Okay, looks pretty good. I'm gonna click save. Now I can right click on the event and then I can choose a different color. So maybe cardio, my face gets red because I'm working out, I'm gonna make it red. Because this is a recurring event, which we're gonna talk about soon, I have the availability to change the color for just this single event, this and all the future events or all of the events. I'm gonna choose all of the events and click okay. So even though this is on my workout calendar, which I have coded as green, I could change the color of that specific event to be red. You could even create a system for your color coding. If you have a lesson planning calendar, maybe the lesson plan calendar default color is red. So when you automatically add the lessons, they show up as red. Once you have actually planned them and they're good to go, maybe you right click and change them to green. So you can use the colors to differentiate between areas of your life, but also whether you have completed tasks or if they are still in the works. Hack number four is to create recurring events, which I actually just showed you in the last hack, but we'll go over it again. Recurring events are great because they will auto populate onto your calendar without you having to create the event every single time. So just as a refresher, in order to create a recurring event, I'm gonna click create and choose event. I'm gonna give it a title. So let's say arm day. Then where it says does not repeat, I'm gonna click and I now have a drop down. I'm going to select that. It gives me a few kind of standard options. So maybe it's daily, weekly on Sunday, monthly on the first Sunday, and so on. But I can also come down to custom and I can tell it to repeat every certain number of weeks or days or months or years, the day of the week that I want it to repeat on. And I can select multiple days and then I can choose an end date. So maybe I'm doing a school year calendar and I know the school year ends in the middle of June. I could have the events auto populate only through that time. So maybe I'm going to have it end on, I'm just going to choose a random date. We'll do June 18th. <laughs> so we're going to have, um, arm day is going to be Monday and Saturday. I don't know. I'm just making this up, hit done. And it will automatically have it there. When I click save, you'll notice it put it onto all of those days. My school always had specific meetings on like the first Wednesday of the month and the second Monday of the month and I could never keep track of what meeting I was supposed to go to when, so I would just create recurring events. The great thing is if one of those moves, you can still edit just that single event. So let's say on Saturday, I'm not gonna do arm day. I can click it. 
I can go in and edit the event. So maybe I'm changing the time or maybe I'm actually deleting the event. Like I'm just not gonna do that workout. If I select delete, it's gonna ask me whether I want to delete just this single event, this and all the future events, which will leave the past ones still on my calendar or all of the events. I'm gonna leave it with this event and click okay. And you will notice just that one got deleted, but the rest are still there. Same thing goes for just clicking and dragging. So maybe this one is gonna be on Tuesday. I can choose this event or this and following events. I'm gonna select just this event and click okay. So just to show you one of the ways that I use this in my personal life, I'm gonna turn on my Emerson's calendar. I can never keep track of whether it's a trash week or a trash and recycling week. So I actually put it as a recurring event on my calendar. That way I know exactly what I have to take out each week. This is great to schedule maybe your children's practices or their games if they're happening at the same time. I know that's not always the case, but you can also use it personally to be able to remind you to do certain tasks like send a weekly email to parents or enter grades in the grade book. You add it into your calendar once and then you're good to go. Hack number five is to set automatic notifications. My first year of teaching, I missed a lot of meetings because I just forgot about them. Oh gee, I'm sorry, I guess I missed the meeting. So you can set notifications for specific events on your calendar, but you can also set an automatic notification for a specific calendar. That way it automatically notifies you for all the events on that calendar. So you could actually put all of your meetings that you wanna be notified for on a single calendar. Then in order to turn on the notifications to be automatic, you're gonna click the three dots, choose settings and sharing. You're gonna choose event notifications and you can have it automatically notify you 10 minutes before or maybe you want it to be 30 minutes before and you can add multiple notifications. So maybe I want one 30 minutes before but also five minutes before and maybe I even want a notification one day before. So you can have multiple notifications that way it almost like leads you up to that time. You also have the availability to receive an email instead of an actual notification. So if you choose the drop down, you can just select email. So maybe I want an email one day before and then the notifications closer to the time. You also can repeat this for all day events down below, but you also can modify the notifications for specific events. So if I click on this event and choose the little button, you'll notice I have those notifications in there, but maybe for this one, I also want a notification one hour before. I could add that in for this event, choose save, and I'm good to go. Hack number six is to enable a daily agenda. This is almost like having a personal assistant that will tell you all the events you have coming that day. <laughs> the only possible assistant to my assistant. Super helpful. In order to enable this, you're gonna select the calendar you want a daily agenda for, choose the three dots, go to settings and sharing, and you're gonna choose other notifications. And under daily agenda, you're gonna select email. You will then receive an email at 5 a.m. every morning with a list of all of your events for that calendar. I will say one downside, at least at this time, Google Calendar does not combine your calendars into a single email. If you turn this on for multiple calendars, you're gonna receive a separate email for each one, but it is helpful and you could have this be part of your morning routine where you're gonna review the agenda for the day. That way you know what's going on. Hack number seven is to search for events. Let's say that you scheduled an event, but you don't remember when you scheduled it. Rather than clicking through your calendar trying to find it, you can actually just search for it. Click the magnifying glass at the top and just type in a word or something you know was in the title. So let's say leg, cause I'm searching for leg day. It will pull up that event. If it is an event with multiple things scheduled, for example, cardio, it will actually list the first one that was scheduled and then all of them going in order. You also have the availability to refine your search using different parameters by clicking the drop down, and then you can tell it to search in only certain calendars or for certain people or certain locations or for certain dates. So you can really narrow down your search if you have a lot of events on your calendar. And once you find the event, you can click on the date and it will open up that date and show you that event. 
Hack number eight is to duplicate or copy events. Let's say you have events that have basically the same settings and information, but they're not recurring, like they happen at random times. You can actually duplicate an event you have already created. Let's say I wanna duplicate this leg day event. I can click on it and I'm gonna choose the three dots and I'm gonna select duplicate. This is gonna open up another window and it's gonna keep all the same settings that I already had so I can go in and just customize the date or the time or any of those other things that have changed. So I'm just gonna select maybe the 27th and click save. You also have the availability to copy an event to another calendar. So if it's a really important event for school, let's say, maybe you want it to be on your school calendar, but also on your personal calendar. That way, if you have your school calendar turned off and the events aren't showing, you will still see it through your personal calendar and it just serves as like an additional reminder. So in order to copy the event, I'm gonna follow kind of the same steps. I'm gonna select it, choose the three dots, and then I'm gonna choose the calendar I want it to copy to. So for example, copy to a pocket full of primary. Notice it pulls up that dialog box. If I wanna keep everything the same, I'm just gonna click save. But keep in mind, it's not automatically going to update. So if I make a change to it on one calendar, I would need to also go in and update it on the other calendar. Hack number nine is to restore deleted events. I mean, I lost it, Dwayne. None of us are perfect, we make mistakes. If you accidentally delete an event and you want to bring it back, you can actually do that. You're gonna click on the settings gear and then choose trash. You'll notice on the left, you can actually view the trash for each of your different calendars and you can see any events that you have deleted within the past 30 days. It only holds on to them for 30 days, but it will list out those events. You can select one that you want to restore and click the restore all selected button. It will add it back to your calendar. Or if you realize that you don't need any of these, you can empty your trash or delete just certain events using the button on the side. And again, you have that restore button there as well. Hack number 10 is to create goals. Now this one is only available at least at this time through the Google Calendar app on your phone rather than the desktop version. So I'm going to show you how to do it on your phone, but it's a really cool feature that will allow you to create almost like a new habit or set a goal, but your Google Calendar will automatically find time for you to do it. So if you have Google Calendar on your phone opened up, you're gonna click the plus sign in the bottom right corner and then select goal. It will allow you to choose a goal such as exercise, build a skill, friends and family, me time, or organize my life. So let's say I want to learn a new skill and you can choose from the ones they've already listed or you can add in a custom skill. I'm going to learn a language. It will ask you what language, let's say I want to learn French. It will ask you how often, so I wanna practice five times a week. It will ask you for how long, let's say an hour, and the best time, uh, let's do evening time. So it's going to automatically find time to be able to schedule this five days a week on my calendar based on my open times. It will take a little bit of time to put this into your calendar, but you do have the availability to edit it once it's been created. So you will notice it has put my Learn French for seven to 8 p.m. on, let's see, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, but Monday that week. So it will kind of adapt based on what you have going on. So that's a really cool way to be able to kind of find time when you think that you don't have it, your Google Calendar will find it for you. So that is it. Again, if you were looking for just a step-by-step -step tutorial for getting started with Google Calendar, I do have that video linked for you down in the description box. But if you found this video helpful, maybe learned at least one new thing that you can start to implement in your life, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you do not miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one. Come on.